You are watching TVC News at 10. President Muhammad Buhari was sworn in as president for the first time exactly five years ago. After being re-elected in 2019, he took the oath of office on the 29th of May last year. The administration has now commenced the second year of its second term. The presidency has given its scorecard in the past five years, insisting that it has performed well in the areas it promised change, including tackling insecurity, reviving the economy, and fighting corruption. According to the presidency, within these five years, the Buhari administration has made salutary impact in almost all the facets of the Nigerian life. But just how much of the president's claims will most Nigerians agree with? Joining me on the news for more on the fifth anniversary of the Buhari administration is Senior Special Assistant to the President on Media and Publicity, Malam Garba Shehu. Thank you for joining us on TVC News at 10. And congratulations on this fifth inauguration anniversary of the Buhari administration. So much has been said about the achievements these past five years. How would you say this government has fared? Well, this ad administration has done so excellently well. And you don't even know how you will begin to talk about these things because if you begin to analyze the, the, the achievements of the administration sector by sector, probably we'll be spending the whole day on this set. However, it is important that we highlight some of the key areas in which the president has made strong commitments and the areas in which he has delivered. Take, for instance, the issue of security. When he came in, Boko Haram was the big issue. It had carved out a territory out of the Nigerian you know, map. They had a state of their own, is the so-called caliphate with a flag and the system of administration of their own system of taxation, that has been abolished now. And uh, Boko Haram is on the back foot now. Uh, after Boko Haram, the administration was challenged by, by farmers and the hardest clashes, particularly in the middle section of the country, Plateau, Nasarawa, Benue, Taraba, Kaduna, and the neighboring states. That too has been got to read of. Now the administration is challenged by banditry, cattle thieves who take life. These two, there's a major operation that has just been launched by the military, and we're going to see the end of this, this thing very soon. If you're looking at issue of corruption, for instance, I think that the most important achievement of the administration is not so much in the amount of money recovered, which is itself important. The thing is that there is the sanitation of the moral environment. The fact that Nigerians today have moved from the erroneous position that corruption was normative. I think there is a sense these days that there is no more impunity, that no matter how in the past in this country, there were people who were too big to be questioned when they stole public money. That era is gone now. The trials are going on. Some people are already in prison. You cannot take what doesn't belong to you and you get out with it. Look at power, for instance. We inherited 5,000 megawatt generation capacity. As we speak today, there is 13,000 megawatt availability. The problem being that the, 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 the distribution companies are simply not programmed to take this power and share it to the Nigerian public. So much going on with infrastructure, roads, railway, and, 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 and now with COVID, we're paying a lot of attention to medical and health facilities in the country. Indeed, a whole lot that you have outlined that uh, the government has embarked on, especially in the core areas of security, fighting corruption, and reviving the economy, which are like three cardinal objectives of the administration. But Nigerians are actually still concerned the talk about the issue of the federal character and uh, the uh, the fact that a number of persons who are holding some positions appear to be from certain section of the country. How do you react to that? You know, uh, some of those assumptions are very erroneous. There was a time we felt this pressure so much that uh, 
between the office of the chief of staff and the secretary to the government, they put the numbers together, the distribution on a state by state level. You know, by the time we had these numbers, they, they simply do not represent the kind of sentiment that is being expressed. However, we decided to downplay the issue. Nigerians are entitled to their own opinions on giving issues of the day. We're not going to be quarreling with them over these matters. It is enough to just say that the president is conscious of his responsibility to the entire country, to those, to those parts of the country that did not even vote for him, among which have had perhaps some of the biggest appointments in the federal cabinet and all of that. So, yes, people will say whatever they want, but the facts don't, don't agree with most of these assertions. Ramalam Sheho, perhaps one of the biggest challenges so far this year is COVID-19, which is not peculiar to Nigeria. Every country uh, is facing this challenge. Between February 27th, when Nigeria recorded its first case, and now we have over 8,000 cases of uh, the virus with about 259 deaths so far. Going forward, what is the government doing to completely manage this situation and to restore hope to the health sector? Incidentally, you know, on this uh, anniversary day, the president uh, signed an opinion which was published by Newsweek International discussing post-COVID economy, not only for Nigeria, but the African continent. COVID, coronavirus, has attacked Nigeria and the world from the point of view of health and from the point of view of economy. And everyone these days is struggling to see how can there be a balance between saving life and also saving economy, because people can also die arising from problems in the economy. And I think that so far we have fared so well. Nigeria has received appreciation and commendation. As a matter of fact, World Health Organization WHO did say that Nigeria was a role model in its response. And as you can see, the West African leaders met and they decided to say, look, President Buhari, be the champion of COVID in West Africa. At the end of all of these things, President Buhari is going to emerge as the COVID hero of the continent. All right, Malam Garba, Shehu, Senior Special Assistant to the President on Media and Publicity. Thank you for talking to us on TVC News at 10.